All right, back with uh, the fascinating and worldly Jeff Leach. Website, jeffreyleach.com is where you can go. Find out all the dates. I'm going to put that on my right? next post, of fascinating and worldly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fighting a cold, but yes. Yeah, I won't put the bit in about you uh, hooking up phlegm while you said it. Yeah, sorry. but uh, And the stand-up special, Jeff Leach, a comedy spectacular, available now on YouTube. Um, Chris is remote. He's uh, hey guys. not feeling well today, but he's got some uh, news stories and some tweets, and uh, we can get into that with Jeff, and uh, Jeff, react however you like. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Good. Uh, so I... Uh, I just want to talk about this tweet that you tweeted um, earlier, Adam, but about the because you you presented your paintball solution to for all, like the flash mob that yes and um, and uh, Jeff to just refresh you. Adam says that if if like the security guards or people just had paintball guns and like so all the all the unruly people on airplanes fighting, the people at drive through windows abusing the the workers and the sure. people who are stealing from CVS and Home Depot and you think and just Louis help them with paintballs. Yeah. Why don't you go to the yeah. next level and get the little bangs, those little bangs that the police hear. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, that's less we, clean up, right? We can put <laughs> pepper in the in the paintballs if if we want, you know. You, you just you just want to make a mess, Adam. I'm going to start with paintballs. Okay. All and right. and they're already making a mess because they're tearing everything off the the shelves Fair and enough. knocking over racks and everything else. I'm just saying. So a little bit of silk you paint get, is not, not going to make the sound of the paintball is enough to make everyone scatter. Like sure. we've had all of these. All right, let's let's look at it this way. Right. Um, we in in America, we've had all these crazy mob school beatings. Somebody, two people died. Two teenage boys died. One was beaten to death recently. Another one was stabbed to death, and. All the teachers can do when these mobs of 16 and 17 year old boys are yeah. just in a full feeding frenzy and beating on someone is to sort of approach from the outside and yell, stop bring it, it. Up, bring it up. Stop. Yeah. They're, they're in frenzy mode. Sure. You know what I mean? And they're punching and kicking someone on the ground. If those teachers had a paintball gun, just pop, 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 hit three guys in the back. As soon as the mob heard the sound of the paint gun, they would scatter. I feel you. And all it would do is ruin a couple of sweatshirts and leave a welt or two on the ass of an unruly 16-year-old. Well, I definitely think it's better than having a, you know, a cop in the school either pulling out a gun or beating up a child. You know, that's, Yeah. That's... Could, well, the cop now has... The cops are in the same position. Either you pull out a gun and fire it, which yeah. you don't want to do, or you yell at the crowd, break it up, but they don't listen sure, to the cops sure. anymore. The paint gun would work. That's all So I'm instead saying. of giving teachers guns, you just want to give them paintball guns? I'll give them paintball guns. Okay, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, now what if the kids get really good at that? You could actually have a double benefit because effectively it could be like an athletics training for the children as well. Yeah. Stimulate a little bit more health and... Yeah, they'd start Always. running. They'd yeah. burn some calories. <laughs> they'd burn a few calories. Yeah, this is a fun. video of some guys uh, stealing someone's catalytic converter, which right. is what we do out here because we've descended into hell. And a guy comes running out with a paintball gun. And they're under the car trying to get at the catalytic converter. i got to see this. Yeah, huge problem in California. This is in Turlock. And swearing. They just get up and run because there's nothing else to do. When someone's got a paintball gun, you got to run. It also do, it. it does sound like those first few shots does sound like a real yeah. firearm, doesn't it? As well. Uh huh. It would work. It would work at the Home Depot. It would work at the school. It would work at the Macy's. It would work in your neighborhood. See, if I was that guy, I would have waited and gone around the other side of the car and then shot at them because there's nothing like taking a paintball to the arsehole. Yeah, really, really push you in the right direction in life, you know? Yes, the uh, blue dye and the brown eye, as, right. as we say in the paintball <laughs> that's what business. You that's what, well, that's what we say. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, paintball. Everyone thinks I'm nuts. It would work. If the big crowds were, like, gathering and ripping off everything and pop, 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 they just... Disperse. Look, That's if, all. If we can't get to the systemic root of why that problem is happening, then, uh, yeah, I think it's the best non-lethal option available. Well, the systemic root is we're letting it happen. It's not that people are poor, because people have always been poor. Right. It turns out that it's a small group of people that are much more organized than we think. Right. I think there was some story out of 
New York, where it was like $4.4 billion worth of retail done by like 200 people. Right, like right, right. Like it's the right, same right. people. They've, oh, you they're mean the gaining, smash and grabs in Yeah, like they the figured the, things, the system yeah. out. It's not just sort of random, sure. you know, random theft. It's uh, The group has gone, oh, this will work. We've, we figured this out. I get that. We'll do it, it. Well, it's criminality, but it's also <laughs> criminality to like generate some revenue, isn't it? Because people are just going, I got nothing, so I'm just going to go and take it from these big corporations that don't really give a shit about anyone anyway. Yeah, but who so cares if they give a shit about anybody? Yeah, well... Oh man, it's I mean, not their job. I'm, to maybe give I'm a, a little. Shit. Maybe I'm a. Li- you're right. Um, I might be a little too. Maybe I'm a little socialist in my outlook because coming from the UK, you know. So there is sure. a part of me that hates the, the. I don't think a small number of people should be as wealthy as they are. Why everyone else is kind of, you know. Yeah, but um, here's the problem. It's it's not really avoidable, given the system. Right. Um, that's number one. Number two. I don't really look at it as a as a finite amount of money. It's there can be ultra rich. They're always going to be ultra rich, and then you can go out and and get money too. It's not it's not because they have hoarded all the money. I guess is what what I'm saying. And there's a certain amount of it that's baked into the system, mm. but it's like McDonald's. You know, you go McDonald's. They they don't they don't pay their workers a living wage. You know, right, and right, then right. you go, all right, but you don't have to work at McDonald's. I, sure. I worked at McDonald's for a summer when I was 16, and I was like, this fucking place sucks. But if there's not any other jobs out there, then you've got to go and work at McDonald's. You've got to take whatever's available to you, surely. Yeah, but there are other jobs available. There, when I did it, there weren't other jobs available. I just available. want these fuckers to pay their taxes, Adam. That's the only thing I really want. I don't care. Yeah, be a big corporation. Be as wealthy as you like. That's absolutely fine. But just pay the correct amount of tax so that when I pay my tax every year on what I earn and that I hustle for, it actually gets spent on the things that it should be spent on, like, you know, some education, maybe well, some fucking health care. That'd be nice, you know, things like that. Well, so. first, I, I, the government's going to waste whatever you give them. That's number one. Sure. I don't I don't. Yeah. Try Trust them to go. Well, if they only had a little more money, then we could have a healthcare system. That's mm-hmm. They're going to squander it. So they're they're partners. But I'd rather in this, they were spending McDonald's game. money than spending yeah. my money and your money well, and his money and but his money. McDonald's you know? corporations are going to do whatever you let them do in terms of tax code. Absolutely. And so and loopholes. <laughs> and we look at them as being you know immoral for doing it or something, but you'd be a fool not to. And then they have their shareholders to mm-hmm, answer mm-hmm. to. So whatever it is you and let... And we still pull up to the drive through Well, I right. don't. You probably don't. But we pull up. A lot of people pull up to those drive throughs and, uh, you know, buy that. For whatever you legally let them do, mm. they will exploit it to the full extent. Absolutely. And every company is going to do that, no matter what it is they say, whatever they preach. If there's a loophole, they will find it. And so if you'd like to shut the loopholes or go with a flat tax or do something, I'm all I'm all for it. Sure. But right now, the corporations are just doing what we what let they, them. What they can get away with. What they exactly. can get away yeah, with. Yeah. Right. All right. What else you got there, Chris? Well, speaking of non-lethal guns, there's a story out today. Um, they're in Compton. A bunch of teachers and the principal all called out sick, along with me. Um, but <laughs> the reason they're calling out sick is because there's a boy at their school who's just so troublesome. I guess he pointed a BB gun at another kid's head. They've had all these different problems with him. So the kid comes back with his mom, and the mom and the principal get into an argument, and the principal just goes, I'm done. I'm over it. Principal calls out sick. All the teachers call out sick just because of this one kid. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're kind so of... They want him out. Oh, that's in comp. They should send that kid yeah. out to the Middle East. Get him to sign up for Hamas. Yes, take your BB gun. That's how you end <laughs> terrorist that cells, tunnel. you know what I mean? Get him to go out to the, uh, you know, the Israeli government as well. He can root them all out. Perfect. We're getting to the point where the system is kind of breaking down, yeah. especially in Compton and in our, in our schools. And at some point, the parents are going to have to start doing some parenting. There's, there's basically two positions. When I was a kid, if you got into trouble at school, your parents would be pissed at you. When you were a kid, how many kids were in your class? Uh, five. Well, we did look at my records once, Chris, right? Wasn't there like 571 in my graduating class? That was my... Yeah, I, can, I can find that th- out. It was 570, because I know I was about 500 right. out of 570. Yeah. I think it was like 571. You went, you went actually near here, North Hollywood, right? You went to yeah. high school, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. So... 
Uh, there was like 500 and 600 in every class or whatever. So there was like 2,000 kids right, right, at right. my school. It was like right. a pretty pretty big school. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing we sucked at sports so badly. <laughs> 2,000 kids to choose from. But, um, yeah, I went to a pretty big school. But in the past, if you got in trouble at school, then you got in trouble at home. Sure. So there was a, there's been a change. The sure. change is the parents used to get pissed at the kid and want to know what went on, even on a sort of macro level. Like if, if you got hit by another friend's parent or mm-hmm. disciplined by another and sent home or something, your parents would be pissed at you. What did you do to piss off Mr. Jenkins? Well, well, I sure. ate some of his Nilla wafers. Well, what were you doing in his cupboard without asking? Now the parents go to the school and yell at the principal. Right, yeah. And then the parents go to Mr. Jenkins' house and yell at him for disciplining their kids. Yeah. That's With the a change. Gun. Oh, that would work. Yes, this is the problem we're at now. I mean, God, yeah, which is trying. I, I feel a little bit like we're trying to condense and oversimplify such a big, that's what <laughs> expensive I do. problem. I oversimplify. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, man. I feel like um, yes, I do think parents need to parent more. Yeah, I, I agree with that across the board. You know, yes, um, be more involved in their kids' lives. That's why you got kids, you know, um, online playing video games and you know uh, getting groomed by pedophiles because their their parents don't care to listen and take an interest in what their kids are interested in, and learn about what it is, and and actually keep a bit of a check on it. But again, we have a generation of very young parents that's been happening now for uh, the last sort of twenty years. Um, people who don't really necessarily think they have any option. For their own personal life, so they're like, "Ah, oh, I'll create a kid. That's how I'm gonna. That's how I'm gonna do something in this world." Um, and a lot of those people probably shouldn't be parents in the first place. I know my parents probably shouldn't have been parents. I don't think you don't think so. No. Why? Oh, I, I don't think they should have been together. I don't think they were right for each other, and they and you know caused a lot of um, a lot of frustrations for themselves, and and also for us as you know that, there was a knock on effect. But. I was educated, and if I got bad grades, I was told off. And if I was uh, out of check, I got a little clip around the ear. You know, that was another thing that used to happen. Different age, though. It's a different age, you know. But you don't think your parents should have been parents? Oh, they should have been, but they should have married different people and had kids with someone that were ha- they were happy with rather than together. Yeah. But I'm glad they did, because if they hadn't fucked, then I wouldn't be sitting here right now getting you to a nine and a half. <laughs> Working my way up. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, don't get me past the 10, because I'm not going to believe I you. Mean, you go past the 10, we end the podcast, we just start having sex. That's how it goes. In the woods, though. In the Let's woods, Let's drop some man. shrooms In the woods. And hit yeah, the we're going to shoot some guns. We can have fun. It'll be great. All right, just a tip. What just else you tip. got, Chris? All right, so I saw you like this tweet, Adam, and this is uh, Oakland City Council. So on Monday, they pass a carefully crafted resolution calling for a ceasefire oh yeah israel hamas war after hours of hearing impassioned rhetoric about the deaths of thousands of civilians in gaza so uh a city council member tried to ins- uh insert language condemning ha- hamas and uh we have a video about a minute long of some of the reaction from so the city somebody tried to condemn hamas in this legislation and the uh ladies got upset okay yeah there's not been beheadings of babies and rapings. Israel murdered their own people on October 7th. Calling Hamas a terrorist organization well, is... I don't know if that's true. ...and plays into genocidal propaganda that is flooding our media and that we should be doing everything possible to combat. I support the right of Palestinians to resist occupation, including through Hamas, the armed wing of the unified Palestinian resistance. As an Arab, asking with this context to condemn Hamas is very anti-Arab racist. Oh, the notion that this is a massacre that. of Jews yeah. is a fabricated Pine. narrative. Pine turn Many the of those killed on October oh, thank 7th, you, ma'am. Your time is up. including children, were killed by the IDF. An amendment condemning Hamas is bald propaganda meant to... A- thank you. Your time is up. To hear them complain about Hamas violence is like listening to a wife beater complain when his wife finally stands up and fights back. Question. Did anyone else notice that those who oppose this resolution are old white supremacists? There's been a lot of atrocity right, propaganda raging. All right, people gone insane. It's weird. We're living in a weird time. It must have been a sale on those scarves. Everyone had one. That <laughs> yeah, was amazing. <laughs> um, I mean, it's such a it's such a hot topic. It's very difficult to have any opinion on this without oh, I got being destroyed by anyone. But man, I'm just for people. I just want to see some humanity. 
Yeah. So Hamas are absolutely a terrorist organization, but the people of Palestine are also being slaughtered in yeah. thousands. They and that's, support that's Hamas. Right. Um, there's a there's a bunch of but uh, they support Hamas. Not all of them do. No, in not the same all way, of them. In the same Too way many. That, in the same way that a, a large portion of Israeli people do not support the Israeli government. You know, they don't that's support. True, but the, the Isra army. Israeli so, government aren't terrorists. I go down to a seven again. I'm, 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 no, oh. I'm not disagreeing with you, but at the same point, I'm not like, I just don't think, I think, God, Jesus Christ, you're trying to get me canceled again, Adam. Uh, listen, being canceled for not supporting terrorists is fine. I don't support terrorists, and I also don't support the, uh, the bombing of civilians. That's yeah, what I don't but, support. But either, they put the or. civilians underneath the terrorists. So what are you going to do? Do you think all those people are 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 um, in support of Hamas? You think all those, you think all those no. 4,000 kids are in support of no, Hamas? No, not all. A just large just some of them. Some of no, them. No, a, a a a a number that is too high that that enables them to exist. But you and I guess the the uh, situational reason for that is when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, you take any option that you got out, even if it is an extremist lunatic way out. In the same way that I think there's extremist beliefs within Israel, there's extremist beliefs within Palestine, and you know, yeah, well, they're, they're, extremism. They don't, they don't to have to not flourish. They don't have to not flourish. They can flourish. They're what, Palestinian choosing, people? Yes, they're not flourishing because of Hamas and because of Jew hatred. Right. I mean, listen. <laughs> You know, it, it's an. I don't know if it's popular. I don't know if it's unpopular, but that's that's this, the this truth. Is a subject ma this that. is a subject matter that I personally I do feel really um, responsible to not oversimplify. Because first of all, I'm not a politician. I haven't done uh, years of research looking into the history of these two countries, these two places, these two groups of people. I don't know enough about the poli uh, the policies of either of the two governments, governance of those places. So for me to comment, on it, I'm a fucking comedian. I make dick jokes and I talk about how I'm going to have sex with you at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And well, that's why, no, that's I, why, that's why Israel, me about I'll so oversimplify it. I, Israel would like to live in peace. Their neighbors do not. I think Israelis would like to live in peace. I don't, yes. I don't think the Israeli government has any desire to live in peace. Well, there's that, there's that argument. I think but there's they, a lot of Palestinians who would like to live in peace. And I do, yes. I do not think Hamas wants to live in peace. No, they Otherwise, don't want to live in they peace. Have, they and, have taken and hostages on October 7th. There's a lot you know, of so. Palestinians who want to live in peace, but not enough to get rid of Hamas. Oh, I, I don't know. I disagree. I think, mo I think most of the people in both those countries probably would rather be living in peace. I, I don't think any of them would rather be worrying about there's whether they're tons brothers, of footage sisters, of civilians like cheering on Hamas when they're coming back. From yeah, but doing there's their so much misinformation on both sides at this point. I mean, it's difficult to even pick out what is real, what is not, what is. Well, Hamas is, lies. You know, Constant. Hamas lies. That's oh, all yeah. they do. But they both lie. Yeah, both, yeah, both, but both no, groups. Israel lie. does not nearly do what Hamas does. It's like, look, here's what they say. Here's, here's how it works. Hmm. They go, we just had a prisoner exchange, right? Hmm. And they go, women and children on both sides were exchanged, sure, right? Sure. Okay. That's a correct statement, but here's the part they're missing. Hmm. Hamas has children. Four-year-olds, sure, two-year-olds, sure, sure, newborn, sure. six-year-olds, women, the Israeli civilians, government Israelis had women has, who have been convicted who, who of tried crimes to blow up again. car bombs, Understood. and 17-year-old boys who tried to stab people yeah. in a pizza parlor. That's sure. not women and children being exchanged. That's terrorists 100%. and women and children being 100%, exchanged. Yeah, That's how the that. news rolls. All right, I've done work well, my yeah. way, way down rather to a six. You getting, uh, You're not down to a six, I don't, I, I don't, I, and I don't think we're like necessarily in a difference of understanding on this no. thing. I just think, you know, this is why I'm sick and tired of fucking celebrities getting involved in this. Because if you really care about that much, get on a fucking plane and go out and fight for the side you think you really pick really up a paintball support. gun for, and go gun? out there <laughs> and take care of business. Yeah, yeah, go shoot a few paintballs at either Hamas or the IDF. Do yes. what you need to do. But honestly, whinging about it on on the internet or whinging about it on podcasts. I agree. None of us are educated enough to understand it, and none of us are living it. Not one of us is living it. What yes. I want to see is innocent people stop being murdered on both sides. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I agree. But that's, Hamas that's can't hide person. behind innocent people. That's the problem. All right, what's next? Well, well. Um, before we, we leave this topic, I just want to, if we're talking about celebrities, uh, Miranda, Cynthia Nixon from Sex and the City, she has now begun a hunger strike outside the White House. She already looks rest. pretty hungry, which is... Yeah. <laughs> Jill Biden Damn. Into yeah. A, well, now she's thirsty and hungry because she, she wants She should have hit a couple of all-you-can-eat buffets before she started that, boy, because she is... <laughs> she <laughs> needs to swing by the yeah. Golden Corral and carb load before she started the <laughs> so, hunger sorry, what, she's, she's on a hunger strike to do what? To so get the, the five-day fast was launched to coincide with what had been scheduled the end of a four-day truce in Israeli's military offensive. 
But yeah, so she's just. Hang on uh, a sec. A five day fast is not a hunger strike. That's a juice cleanse. <laughs> that, no, that's me yeah. back when I was a struggling, you know, actor and comic, just getting yeah. to the end of the month and not even being able to eat for five yeah, days. Yeah, you that's got an not... audition for Aquaman 3. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going on a five-day cleanse. So i got to get those abs popping for That's Sex right. in the City 5. So, That's you know, right. unbelievable. Yeah, five a pretty, day pretty weak strike, hunger strike. Um, all right, well, let's let's move over to Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban in the news now because he, for a couple of reasons. First off, he announced that he's leaving Shark Tank after Ooh. 15 seasons, I think 16 seasons. And um, and now he's I'm glad just, they're finally releasing him back into the wild. That's right. I know. He's lived and in he's that just, tank in captivity, <laughs> hand fed, uh, hand fed minnows exactly. by his trainer in Orlando, Florida. Probably that's Isn't right. That and joint? now and his fin was was toppled over. God, he yeah. had a droopy fin, and now he's being let go back into the open sea. Good. <laughs> it's good. It's let him be free, but. The um, so he's set to also sell a controlling share of the Mavericks oh, majority stake, three point mm-hmm. five bill or something, right? It's worth yeah that. to the casino billionaire Miriam Adelson. So he bought the Mavericks in two thousand for two hundred eighty five million, nice. and it's um, reports are saying it's going to be a three point five deal, billion dollar deal. And that's for six fifty five percent or something like that. I mean, say so controlling is interest. That's not the whole price for the whole team. Mm. That's right. just a that's percentage just, that's of majority it. stake. And but it's also going to be structured in an incredibly unusual way because he's going to retain some shares of the team. But even though he's not the majority owner, he will retain full control over basketball operations. Mm-hmm. Mm. So he'll still be very heavily involved. So a lot of people saying um, this is suspicious. This is suspect that he's leaving Shark Tank. He's selling a majority stake of the of his basketball team. Um, people are thinking, is it because he's going to run for president? Oh. And he's trying to no, it's because himself. all these really wealthy people understand that the end times are coming and that society is going to eat itself alive within the next probably 20 years. Oh. So they're all just selling up. That's why Bill Gates sold his stuff and now he's bought all the seeds in the world. Do you know what I mean? These people are yes. like, literally just going, huh. I need a controlling stake as much as I can over Earth and I'm going to go, they're going to go and build their little spaceships and they're going to go and get, well, off, now, get off planet. Now you're talking because yeah. I've had a theory for a number of years. Why are all the richest guys on the planet trying to go to space. Oh, yeah. They're all they, working on getting they know out of here. Around. We've been wiped out on, now they found a, a third advanced human civilization from 13,000 years ago, you know, monolithic structures in Turkey and Malta that actually show there was, this predates the Sumerians 6,000 years ago that we know and we have evidence of or major archaeologists have. It's all suppressed by the Smithsonian's and, and the, uh, the CIA, but... Um, yeah, no, there was another, we've been wiped out three times. The human race has been wiped out three times, which is very likely if you look at any of the major, you can, you can look at it from a scientific side, uh, archaeologically, historically, or you can look at it from um, a theological side, even all those texts. Well, we, we get wiped out by a great flood, and that's probably because we go through an asteroid field every few thousand years, and it slams into the earth, causes great floods, and we get whoop, wiped off. When we get high and go to the woods, is this going to be part of the conversation? Because I'm going to freak the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) No, when we get high and take mushrooms in the woods, you're not going to be out tripping. You're going to trip for a little while and look at nature, and then you're going to go and lay down and close your eyes, and you're going to trip inside of yourself, man. That's how you really, that's how you connect. That's how you leave your body. Okay. It's it's, it's a whole different experience. But yeah, for real, I think these rich people know. They know. They're not idiots. They know more than we know. All right, let me me float this trial balloon out Mm. see what you think. Sure. Um, we're all, as human beings, basically narcissists. I mean, no fault of our own, but we worry about ourselves, you know, and we take care of others in our sphere and things like that. But, but we think in terms of, you know, how does this affect me? Right. And in the past, part of the, one of the biggest sort of narcissistic thoughts is this is going to end on my watch. And we're not the first to have this Absolutely. thought. Absolutely, you're correct. And so in the past, it was all religious people. Mm-hmm. And basically, the rapture was coming in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. They would be the end. They would be the last people out of the stadium. You know, It's a narcissistic thought, but it's a consistent thought. And now the thought has sort of shifted from religious people to more agnostics and atheists, mm-hmm. and the thought is not about the rapture, but it's about nature and climate and more sort of less um, more real things. That more we can more real, see. real yeah, things. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And so, part of me looks around and I go, 
oh, this is end of days. Like, here it is. Sure. These guys, there's all these wars breaking out everywhere. Everyone, all the nut jobs got the nukes, you know. Is this, is, and you hear Greta Thunberg talking, and she's like, you're not going to, you know, we're not going to be here in nine years if we keep going and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then there's another part of me that goes, maybe I'm just as guilty as the religious guy from 500 years ago because I'm a narcissist, and I think this is going to end on my watch. Right. And I don't know what to think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it will end on, on your watch or on my watch or on any of our watches, but, I mean, we are pushing towards that. I think we're moving in that direction, whether it happens during our lifetime or not. And, uh, this is, again, psilocybin will help you. Because, like, <laughs> honestly, once you, once you do that, you go, it doesn't really matter when that comes. It doesn't really mm. matter. If you've done enough work on yourself, if you're happy with yourself, if you're finding a way to feel love, feel connection, feel happiness on a daily basis in small things. Like this morning, I took my dog for a, a nice walk for an hour before I came here. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing things like that, focusing on the things that make me feel fulfilled and happy, it doesn't matter. When the end times come, whether it's a big flood or a big new, you know, Russia sends over a bunch, America sends over a bunch, we all get blown smithereens. It doesn't really fucking matter. Mm. Because if you've done some work on yourself, when you're done, it's only, it's only a vessel. Your body's just a vessel. Now, when the nukes are launched, mm. do you have some sort of emergency orgy plan? <laughs> I do. I'm going to go and run to all the neighbors and knock on the doors and go, who wants it? I'm just going to be running up and down the street like, come on, we got five minutes before the fallout hits us. I wouldn't even bother knocking on the door. I'd just put my dick through the mail slot and whoever gets to it first. You know what I mean? It's Man, end of days. I actually, I don't, I did think about this. I wonder what my thought, if I saw a bright light in the sky and knew there's just like a couple of minutes until this is all over for me. Mm. What would I do? I, and, I, and I wonder whether sexual desire would be something I would go towards. I just don't think it is. I think I'd pour myself, after five years of sobriety, I would pour myself a nice long whiskey, like a really nice whiskey, mm. nice Japanese whiskey maybe, something yeah, like that. Yeah, and then I'd sit down it. with my dog and I'd just watch it. I'd sit out with a pair of binoculars and like stare at the thing and I'd just sit there with my doggy stroking my dog. Yeah, That'd be the perfect way to go out. I'd, I would join you in that. Yeah. I'd probably text We'd be there. Up. We'd be in the woods together. Ah, fuck your kids, man. You Me, run. you, the dog. Yeah, you're right. And just kissing the tips. All right. <laughs> well, let's do one more, Chris. What do we got? All right. So there's this uh, crazy video after a, a rapper's concert, Nardo Wick. So he just finished doing a show in Tampa. I saw it. A, yeah, and a fan comes up and asks. Uh, he wants to. He wants to get a picture, and then he sees him like in, in the back of the club. So he he goes and he uh, he has his phone out and he wants to get a picture. And Nardo's bodyguards sucker punch him twice, right? So he gets hit on the side of the head. It stuns him, and then another guy punches him in the face. Like, and then he gets knocked down, ends up having to go to the hospital. And it's just this. It's just this terrible, terrible video. But um, yeah, we have. Do you want to watch it? Yeah, I've seen it. You're going to put your hand up. No, uh, the guy survived, I guess. He's yeah, got he terrible problems, though. But um, Like ongoing health issues from it? Like, well, I think he's still of... in the hospital, and this okay. happened like 10 minutes he's gonna ago. He's going to get but a check, though, isn't he? He's going to get a serious I check. I think uh, Nardo's yeah. cutting a check. Um, well, Nardo, he went on Instagram saying, uh, you know, I don't condone what happened to my fan after the show. And in the video, he even, like, right at the end, you could see him kind of grab his gut bodyguard and tell him to chill. Well, uh, the thing about, all right, a couple things. The first bodyguard overreacts and just cold cocks the guy. Once the guy is stunned and sort of out on his feet, the second guy laying into him is bizarre and sort of very dangerous. It's almost like, that like person, he might have some repressed trauma of his own. And might I, just be I a would little, say he may be doing a little, a little acting out. The first yeah. guy gives the shot. We can watch it. Uh, and it's like, what the hell? But this, it's the second guy. So the guy goes behind him and he's stunned. And the second guy just dives on him, like trying to kill him, which is a bizarre yeah. impulse for a guy who's just sort of slumped over. Also, I hate the nature of these videos because we never get to see a lead in. We never get to see what, what, what's, what's led to this moment. What, I mean, this kid's out cold. And, and, and also the other guy, he doesn't really look like a bodyguard. He no. looks like a neighborhood dude who's no, he, hanging he looks out. Like, he looks like he's part of his entourage. You know what I mean? Like, why did he right. slap like him? Crew. Yeah. He literally throws a combo to his face. I mean, that. so in my world, that guy is more dangerous and needs to be incarcerated than somebody, than the wife who tried to poison the husband and collect the insurance. Oh, Th wow. that's, these are the most dangerous amongst us. The wife that tried to poison the husband and collect the insurance is never going to do that to you, unless you marry her. 
<laughs> I mean, I think they're both scumbags. Uh, you know. Yes. Yeah, but that's, this that's, that's hard dangerous. to watch. I mean, if he's literally walking around with a phone trying to get a photo, what may have happened to lead up to that, I imagine, is he's gone, oh, come on, man, come on, let me just get a photo. Come on, bro, let me get a photo, let me go. And he's hassling. But there's a very Maybe. easy way. Oh. When you're a giant bouncer like that, all you got to do is just push him away. He's not, He's that kid clearly had no... Well, the first guy has some plausible deniability, which is he felt that his client was being threatened. And he didn't of, know yeah. what the phone could have been a gun, you sure. know, whatever. And he slugs a guy. He's still going to get sued, but there's some plausible deniability. Yeah, the second guy was a little animal. As the guy was completely out on his feet and posed no danger, the second guy who slammed his head to the ground. I mean, that's... It's always interesting, the small ones, the smaller violent yes. dudes, always jump in once the big guy's already given a slap. Once they Chihuahuas know it's all okay. and St. Bernard's. Yeah, the Chihuahua's yeah. the one that's always doing the yapping. All right, I'm going to watch it again. It's it's too, even even the bigger bouncer tries to like stop him. He even yeah. just goes whoa whoa whoa. We're like you know like what are you doing, man? All right, so Nardo's yeah. getting sued. Well, yeah, so they obviously want to press charges, but Nardo's not giving up the names of his guys. Can I say quite shamefully, I, when you started this and you said, uh, you know, uh, after a rap concert, Nardo, I, I don't know who the hell Nardo is. I've never heard of him I don't him know who life. Nardo I is I thought you either. meant Nardwa. I was like, Nardwa, the sort of the hip-hop interviewer, got... I got one of his fans beaten up. I think I couldn't imagine him. Is that's little... Nardwa? Yes, Nardwa. Is he in the, the UK? Uh... Oh no, he's a very famous um, uh, uh, alternative interviewer who is very well respected, certainly within the rap community. I'm he's not a, immersed he's in this that very world. Strange white dude with a kind of curly hair and a, a little golf hat with um, tartan print on it. And he asks very he he does a, such a deep dive on his interviewees. Oh, there he is. Throws them out. There you go. I was, I was imagining yeah. this guy's like What's Nardwa? that dude in Hall and Oates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, there is another Damn. famous Nardo who's not in the rap community. Right. Who's that? We can find it. Emmy, you can look for it. Um, you can find Louis De Palma. Put in Louis De Palma shouting out Nardo um, in the sitcom Taxi, the okay. famous sitcom Taxi. With Annie Kaufman. Uh, with Andy Kaufman and, and Judd Hirsch and, and uh, Danny DeVito mm. and, and many others. Belushi, was he in that as well or not? Am I no, I'm no, she, he wasn't. But Elaine, what, oh, not Elaine. What is the actress with the photographic Elaine. memory? Mary Lou Henner. But Mary Lou Henner. Yeah. Um, I think her name in, in, in Taxi, was it Elaine Nardo? Yes. 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 So, D D so Nardo is what... Louis De Palma was his name in the sitcom. He'd go, Nardo! Like, that's the original Nardo. Right. Now, I don't know if Nardo, the rap act, was a huge taxi fan and took the name from that. I'm, I'm going probably not. Hundred, no, I th I'm going to go 100% yes. 100% yes. 100% yes. He's a super Big into taxi old fan. Series. Yeah, he grew up watching And he loved runs. Elaine Nardo. So much. It's out there. There's, there's got to be Louis. That was his big thing. He'd get into the microphone. He'd be in the cage, and he wouldn't say Elaine. He would yell, Nardo! And she'd come <laughs> scurling along. Yeah. And she never got anyone beaten up, as far as I know. Not that Nardo. No. But the rapper whose name was inspired from her from her. So basically work. you're saying he's letting down the, the namesake a little bit. He's almost... Elaine Nardo Bringing is not going to be happy yeah. about what he has done to besmirch her good, good name. Yeah. Is it, does it exist, Emmy? Does uh, Taxi with... Um, I'm still looking. What is doing the best it of Louis on VHS, I think. That's unfortunately... <laughs> yeah. What. Or maybe on a wax cylinder somewhere. Yeah. I'm dating myself. But um, yeah, it was uh, Danny DeVito... I just type in Danny DeVito yelling Nardo, and we'll see if uh, see if something pops up. Someone's gonna at some point splice the sound from Taxi over that video. Nardo, uh, yeah. Nardo pop, pop, Nardo, pop. Yeah. Oh man, mash it up. There you go. That's the remix. All right, right I'm not there. going anywhere until you find Danny DeVito yelling Nardo. And that was you looked it up, Chris. That is her last name, Elaine Nardo. Yeah, yeah. we got that part yeah. right. All right, do one more for us then. All right. Um, so Robert De Niro, he just uh, spoke at the Gotham Awards. He's pissed. 
he was he, yeah he, he's upset so he had this whole speech written out um but then he appeared flustered as he read his remarks from the teleprompter which scrolled back and forth as he attempted to find his place and he realized that his speech was edited by apple who produced the film that um killers of the flower moon yeah so uh so he decided to uh go off script and we have the video of it. it's like two minutes long we could watch some of it the beginning of my speech was edited, cut out. I didn't know about it. And I want to read it. Bef- Don't encourage this it, <laughs> elderly abuse. It was, thank you. History isn't history anymore. Truth is not truth. Even facts are being replaced by alternative facts and driven by conspiracy theories and ugly, ugliness. In Florida, young students are taught that slaves develop skills which could be applied for their personal benefit. The entertainment industry All right, hold on. isn't uh, immune. Yeah, they're taught that when they were enslaved, they learned trades. When they were enslaved and then when they were free, many of them went into those trades, which is not a lie. You don't have to like it, but it's, it's historically what happened. So... His, he gets right out of the gate with the lies, except for how could it not be true? You can have I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the comment he's making. I think he's saying that the, the way it's been presented is almost that this was a boon in those slaves' lives. That, it's the, not. The, the, you the, know, the, the people who wrote the story, the people who wrote the textbooks are two elderly black scholars, and they said many slaves learn trades, and then when they're freed, they use those trades. That's all. This is them twisting that but if they were still back in whatever origin country they were brought over against their will they probably would have learned a whole different set of trades that would have benefited them way more without you know receiving 50 lashes on the back on a daily basis oh that's yeah point, well so. no that's no, not the point the point is, is that's like going it's listen a, it's i am historical. sex trafficking that's like going he's sex trafficking women but you know it's i mean they're really learning how to fuck well and that's an important thing that you know they can put that to use on the streets when they get freed you know, well, it's, it's not. listen, you're writing a history book, right? Yeah. You have to write about things that happened. It sure. either happened or didn't happen, good or bad. Sure. So but you're you go, also educating the, children. I think the way that you do that, you have to be at least so, at least mildly socially conscious of the information that you put into those historical why is textbooks. It, why is it hurtful to kids to accurately report that some slaves learned a trade while they were slaves and then opened businesses using those trades? Well, it almost suggests that it was, like I say, like a positive thing in their lives. It suggests that they have sort of dominion over themselves. Like it's a positive that Mm. they learned something and then applied something. Yeah, but they would have learned way more in their home countries. Well, they they can add that as an addendum. But what I'm (laughs) saying is, is it's not a lie. Oh, man. He's calling it a lie. Yeah, this one I don't know if we're going to agree on, Adam. Well, you sure. don't like slavery. I, I definitely get it. do not like right. slavery. But everyone in the world did it. Do right. we do you understand right. that? Uh, at some point, yeah. Everyone did it. Were, yeah, most people, most people did it. A no, lot of, every nation was involved with slavery. Not every nation yes, was involved with predates, slavery. predates the United States. Right. Do you know that? Well, of course, there was slavery in you know ancient Egypt and uh, yes. the Roman Empire and the Grecian Empire. I'm yes. aware of that. The Macedonian Empire and, and the it Illyrian kept going. Empire. It kept going. Sure, there, right. There has we, been slavery. We didn't at one point. It. That doesn't make, make it, you know, positive in anyone's life. Who said that? Well, maybe these textbooks. That's what you're suggesting, I guess. He's lying. He's lying. They said. Well, how do you find fault with this? First off, it's a historical textbook. Man, you got you got. So you, you don't like if, the Hindenburg? If the we, Hindenburg caught on fire. You disagree, or you don't like it, it or people died, or it was bad. On fire. Definitely caught on fire. I caught on fire. <laughs> yeah. All right. So am I allowed to write that? Of course. Yeah. Or you don't like people dying in a dirigible? I get what you're saying, but they're not saying they're not saying. Uh, God, no, I mean that's that. I don't even know if those two. Things well, here's can, the question: Did people parallel? learn a trade while they were slaves? Oh, again, I haven't done enough research on this to make any. Well, do you kind think it's possible and... that they wouldn't learn a trade? Yeah, they probably learn how to pick cotton because that's what some they did. Were but then doing, right? others learn how to build or or blacksmith. Understood. Okay, can we agree on that? Oh, but yes, yeah. Okay, some people so then can we also agree that once they were freed, they remained blacksmiths and made their own. Oh, job. that was probably yeah, maybe, maybe. Oh some, no, some, no, that's had to happen. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, man. Just because you are taught a particular trade against your will that you never wanted to fucking learn in the first place doesn't mean that's a good thing for you. Just no, because who, those there is because, no good because, thing for because them those, because those people learn how to. Uh, but pick who said up, pick it was up. a good thing? 
but that's not well, the that's, text. That's right. how it's been presented. So no, it's certainly by certainly by Florida, Florida, Floridian political figures who have defended the the reasoning for including that in the textbooks. They have presented it, and I've seen that certainly. That one thing I can say because I've digested some of the material. They have presented it like you know this is this was uh, positive for these people's lives. That is that has been a common. Well, learning a trade, being freedom. being freed and possessing a skill, learning is a trade better under than duress not. does not mean that is what you would remotely have been interested in learning, exploring, or becoming if you had been living your life as a free person. Yeah, but that's not part of the curriculum. Sure, and I, I don't know, necessarily feel like that needs to be part of the curriculum either. Doesn't, doesn't, well, it doesn't add anything to the learning that I'm getting. You're, but learning that people... you're writing a historical account of sure. things that happen. Sure. So either it happened or it didn't happen. But if it happened, it good or happened, bad, what, what was you the, what put was the, it into the into the script. What was the reasoning for the for, for the inclusion of that in the rewrite? The reasoning? Yeah, what was the reasoning that for it's an, the, what Florida, It happened Florida historically because they said to people recount what happened over the course of slavery. See, I disagree. I think that it was included in the rewrite of these textbooks to present uh, history in a slightly different light, in a light that is more favorable to, uh, you know, to... But why is it your job to figure out the light? It either happened or it didn't happen. Sure, it happened. A lot of things happened. This morning I had a massive shit, but I wouldn't have come on here and immediately gone, hey, just so you know, I had a shit this morning. Like, it's, All right. it's not necessarily useful for the You're conversation. You're not making sense. They wrote a textbook <laughs> about something that happened. He's calling it a lie, except for it happened. Right. So it's not a good example of a lie. You don't like it. I don't like it, but it happened. Understood. That's what I'm saying. Understood. All right, we'll okay. let him we can, we can agree on that. Okay. Oh, we got more? That's it. That's all he said. <laughs> and then he paused. Wait, he, had no, a, he had a Mitch McConnell. He just sat, sat there for the next two ten minutes. seconds. Mitch McConnell maybe got punched by Nardo's goons. <laughs> Which could be applied for their personal benefit. The entertainment industry isn't immune to this festering disease. The Duke John Wayne famously said of Native Americans, I don't feel we did wrong in taking this great country away from them. There were great numbers of people who needed new land, and the Indians were selfishly trying to keep it for themselves. Lying has become just another tool in the charlatan's arsenal. Well, by the way, the former the, president, both, both things were just things that either happened or somebody said. You disagree with both of them, but they're not examples. There's a million COVID examples of lying, right. for instance. This is John Wayne drunk saying something stupid about Indians, which he did say, right. which we disagree with. And then this is a historical account of slavery, but not good examples of lies. For themselves. Lying has become just another tool in the charlatan's arsenal. The former president lied to us more than 30,000 times during his four. Thank you years in office and he's keeping up the pace in his current campaign of retribution but with all his lies he can't hide his soul he attacks the weak destroys the gifts of nature and shows disrespect for example by using pocahontas as a slur filmmakers on the other hand strive and this is where i came in and i saw that they edited all that all right he's turning an old blowhard Trump, poor Trump's like, if I get reelected, I got to do 7,500 lies a year average. Otherwise, I, I'm not, I'm not going to beat break. those numbers. I'm going to so lose to my, my so personal best. All right, you can stop. Uh, yeah. Look, so anyway, De Niro wanted, is an idiot. Apple wanted him to obviously just talk about the movie. Yes. So they, they, they took that speech and they revised it and delivered it to the teleprompter less than 10 minutes before the event started. Yes, because they didn't want the old blowhard pontificating about how much he hates this country either. They want to kind of stick to the script, which was their movie. He's an idiot. I just, you know what's, what's stupid? I think they're all idiots because none of them understand the reasoning they're there for. If you're going to invite Robert De Niro to come and accept an award and give a speech, then expect him to talk about the things he's passionate about if that's where he's at in his life. Oh, and yeah. Which clearly no, is. that's on and them. Vice versa, he's going to do If you're it. doing movies with Apple, guess what? They got fucking slave shops in China. You, you, you're, yes. you're, you're, you're working for the devil anyway, mate. So if, you're truly, if you truly care that much, set up your own independent production company and make your own movies with your own money. I, I would argue many of those 
slaves that statement. Apple employs do learn a skill, oh, and it can oh be implied. God. It can be applied once they're free. Making an iPhone isn't a transferable <laughs> skill. You take that right out to the market, man. <laughs> take it to the street. Open a kiosk. There you go. Homemade phones. There you Come go. on now. Where's there your you imagination? All right, Jeff. This has been a slice of heaven. I really mean it. Yeah, I've really enjoyed talking with you. It's been fun. Yeah. Whenever. How often are you out in L.A.? Oh, I live in. I live down the road. Oh, oh I like thought you were New York away. base. Oh, well, then uh, come back anytime you like. I would love that. That's a fun conversation. I would love that. All right. Uh, by the way, the stand up special, Jeff Leach, a comedy spectacular, available as we speak. Jeff Leach Comedy. Dot, or sorry, jeffleach.com is where you go. Je- well, jeffreleach.com, actually. Oh, sorry. Jeffleach.com is a Texas state Republican uh, ah, candidate who I do not want to be associated with. My mistake. No, jeffreleach.com. Jeffrey Just Google it. You'll find it. It'll be there. 